Well, here we are, evening of the 3rd of June, Galway over there, Nemo next to us, and the uh, start line out over that way. Having a little snack before we go, and a cup of tea. Julian's all dressed and ready, I've just got to get suited and booted and we'll be ready for the off. Yeah, I think you're probably right, I can't see a lot there. <laughs> and so, Easy Tiger have started, it's a little bit after midnight on the uh, leg two. You'll just have to imagine what it looks like. Green boy at the end of the channel. We've got a nice crescent moon. Lovely crescent moon. The flesh pots of Galway behind us. And uh, luckily we've got a decent amount of breeze at the moment. So we're making about seven knots just under white sails. And now we're clearing the channel. We're about to hoist the kite. <laughs> Tiger. One reef in the main because we were going too fast. We slowed down a bit, but we're still doing 10 or so knots. Working out how to hang on here. And we're hoping the wind's going to decrease a bit. Um, not very sailor of us. Wind is finally sort of dying down a bit. And we did have a dolphin around just now. Attempted to uh, tie it down with string, um, but that was very difficult to do uh, while the boat was moving and bouncing, uh, and it hasn't held. Um, but the rudder is actually still steering us, and uh, I think the little wing on the bottom is, is stopping it from popping up anymore, it's keeping it straight. So, uh, that and the lashing that Neil put on is as. as we had an issue with the, uh, the yellow brick run out of charge. It's actually dry in there now. So here we are in Killybegs, which so far I can heartily recommend, certainly when the sun is shining like it is today. Uh, we got here oh, about 15-20 minutes ago and of course it's a uh, bank holiday weekend, it's Sunday now so most um, normal sorts of things are not open. It's a big fishing port so um, the assistant harbour master has told us that um, emergency services are available so if we need help with repairs we should be able to get it. Priority number one is to get make some proper food um, because we've been in survival mode for the last um, uh, 12 hours at least, probably more. And I'll show you what's happened. Normally there's a piece of batten that goes between two U-bolts that holds the rudder down. And the one closest to us has popped off. We don't know if we hit something, whether it was just the force of the water, because we were doing around about 13 knots stay period at the time it happened. So here's a lashing. There was some old fixing points that used to hold the rudder down. Um, which is still in place, so we were able to put a sail fly across that and that just about kept it under control. Um, but it's not ideal for continuing. That 
is the main issue we need to deal with. The other issue is this window at the front. Um, when we were on port tack, there's a lot of water comes up over the bow and hits the window and some of the bonding on the bottom edge of the window failed. So uh, the water is getting in and depending on which way we're leaning, it'll run either down into the, the port hull or across the shelf down into the starboard hull. And that was, well, when we were going the reasonable lick, that was uh, filling up the hull quite quickly. There's a couple of places in this side window as well, in the corners where you can see the water bubbling out there. But that's not so severe. It has to be, uh, the water has to be running down the windows for it to get up and under there. Tea or coffee, Mr. Todd? Uh, coffee, please. So, Neil's on with the food. We've had a visit from the assistant harbour master, so he's given me his number. So, we've got somebody to call if we need to, and we're going to gather our thoughts, find out what's on the boat, and see how we can deal with this repair. Well, that's the repair in place. Hopefully, it'll do the job. The only problem is, is it says the voodoo glue needs 24 hours to cure. Um, I don't think we're going to give it that long, but we are going to be a little bit cautious as we're now so far behind the others, we're, I guess, not really racing anymore. But there's no point in stopping for a fix and then leaving it and having it break straight away because we didn't let it cure enough. So it's now about three in the afternoon and we're probably going to leave it until first thing tomorrow morning before we depart. We've uh, sycophlex the windows that were leaking as well and uh, those say that they need 24 hours to, uh, to go off as well. So again, it won't quite get 24, but hopefully by taking our time, the repairs actually last rather than falling apart on us and effectively having wasted this time we've stopped. Good morning, this is leg two, it's Bank Holiday Monday. We've just left Killy Bakes behind us after our repairs. We've got the spinnaker up and um, enjoying the beautiful coast of Donegal. Fairly calm this morning and it looks like we're going to be spinnakering for a while. Tea is up and bacon and bread has been consumed. We're on short rations this morning because um, we had an extra day or so sorting ourselves out. And the bacon had frozen. <laughs> oh yes. The past. <laughs> so yeah we we had a limited stock of edible, unfrozen bacon. The repairs in place. We're not really testing it at the moment, but um, we'll see what happens as we head our way up towards St Kilda and beyond. Good evening. This is 9 p.m. on towards St Kilda. J zero and the jib up. Um, just cracked off a tad. The wind has started to die down. Boat speed here, which is cracking off a little bit. Current wind speed. That's also cracking off a little bit. If I, this red line is the rum line, and this is us, there's a fishing boat behind us. So we're just creeping up to the rum line at the moment, having been headed off a little bit earlier in the day. And if I zoom out, you can see bottom coast of Ireland, and these are the Hebrides, and this is St Kilda, which is where we're going to. So at the moment, we're pointing straight there, which is nice. Neil's just heating up our evening meal which is our chicken tikka masala and um, so we will dine in style as usual Day four of um, leg two from Galway to Lerwick. Second day after our 
enforce little stopping Kelly bags for the rudder cues holder up there. Bit frustrating overnight, uh, light and variable winds, but we kept going in roughly the right direction. Over there, some was our first sight of Scotland and the uh, bottom end of Barra. Southerly breeze at the moment, not quite what was forecast, and we didn't really have the forecast what was forecast yesterday either. But the uh, big yellow kites dragging us along reasonably well. A little way to the uh, east of the run line, but going pretty well. Sort of six and a half knots at the moment, so we can't complain. As you see, it's glassy calm seas, but a bit of a swell coming up from behind due to be some nasty weather on the north coast of Ireland. Going quite nicely, just enjoy the coffee. It can't be air a press for a good coffee. Hopefully we'll keep on making good progress today and the pair's holding out well so far. So cutting along nicely. Good morning, this is day four I think of um, our leg two. It's Tuesday the seventh of June. Uh, it's about 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, we had a pretty slow night, speed down to 4 to 5 knots. Now it's up to about 6 and a half. It's going to take a long time to get to our destination, I think. That's a Hebrides or two, just behind Julian. And our latest little innovation is having to drop the main because the uh, screws in the sliders are unscrewing themselves. So we've uh, dropped it down and locked tighted it up and so hopefully it'll stay in place but it's had actually remarkably little effect on the speed oh no yeah we are down a little bit now That's i guess the wind's dropped a bit now <laughs> Quarter to six on Tuesday the 7th of June. And we've got St Kilda in sight behind me here. The wind's dying off. We've had a bit of sunshine this afternoon, which is very pleasant. And we're learning to cope without wind data. But it's a bit like a teenager learning to cope without the internet connection. There's a, certainly a fear of missing out on we don't know what we don't know. And we've just got the tea on, a bit of tea and cake. We have actually fixed the, the sliders, put a bit of Loctite on the bolts to try and um, keep the, the battens attached to the cars. St Kilda's finally showing up in the GoPro. It's certainly a pretty bleak looking place. Looks like there's some sort of listening outpost there still. So uh, yeah, we, we're there. So, Julian clearing the kite away as the forecaster. Four to six on the next little bit towards Shetland. We are passing quite close to St Kilda. It's impressive. in 20 knots in Easy Tiger. Catch one on the floor pan and uh, get a fairly regular release over, over the top. Of the Good evening, this is Easy Tiger on uh, Thursday the 9th of June. We are no longer sailing. We have stopped in Stornoway. Uh, we arrived yesterday about half past ten in the evening, um, having left kitty bags four days ago um, and sailing but final bit of the coast of Ireland and then across to the top of uh, the Hebrides um, at which point we were facing quite a fresh northeasterly wind um, and according to the forecast we had 
that was going to continue um, sort of 20 to 25 knots for the next 24 hours. And uh, we were getting pretty um, pounded, I would say. Um, everything on board was wet. Uh, we were wet. Uh, and um, we weren't entirely comfortable. We could do another 24 hours of that. So um, we came in here. Um, and now we've got to wait for uh, the strong winds, uh, southerly winds to blow through in the next two or three days um, before it's going to be comfortable for us to continue. Uh, this means that uh, we are not going to continue the lap of the islands. Um, we are instead going to make our way back down uh, along the south along the coast of Scotland um, and enjoy the scenery, and uh, which is some of the best cruising grounds in the world, they say. Um, hopefully the weather will let us do that reasonably comfortably. But now we're not racing, we can pick and choose our moments and uh, enjoy ourselves. Uh, it's a shame we couldn't continue. If we could have survived that 24 hours um, straight into the wind or um, it's possible we could have picked up um, more favourable wind later, but I looked at the forecast and there was also a chance that we could have got pushed more and more into the strong winds and um, we just felt it was um, prudent to, um, to stop while we were still in one piece and um, while there was somewhere um, safe that we could get to. Um, so here we are in Stornoway, I'll take you on a little tour. Um, you can see we're doing at the moment. It's shambles. It's a shambles in here. <laughs> well, this is. Um, we've just been kind of picking up the pieces since we got in. Um, so we've, we've had a shower and a good meal ashore. Um, and we've started to dry things out, but um, we've got a bit of rain coming along, so um, the drying hasn't uh, been entirely successful. Um, but I can I can show you where we are. The little harbour in Sornaway, we're right next to the lifeboat and the marina that's been here for eight or nine years and the town which is a bit of metropolitan normalness in what feels like the end of the world. Can't fault the welcome, there was a chap here to meet us at um, half past ten yesterday evening, show us to our berth and even um, sort us out with some takeaway food.